Welcome back to Pax Unplugged. Jason Levine here with another Dice Tower interview. I have Ivan Van Norman, who's with Geek and Sundry, and we're going to be talking all sorts of things here about Tabletop Day. Tell us about everything that's going on with this. Oh my God, there's so many things, but uh, I will talk to you about Tabletop Day a little bit. I mean, beyond just being here at Pax Unplugged and doing like the Critical Role stuff and everything else, we're here chatting a lot, chatting a lot with publishers about uh, Tabletop Day 2018, which is going to be in late April again this year, and uh, it's and it's honestly like. We had a really good success with it last year because we changed how the format essentially worked. And this is my second year being involved as the executive producer of the event. Um, previously, uh, it was being run by other people, but this circumstances in this year, we're trying to get it so that the community, we got a lot of feedback from last year because we actually had a giant feedback form that was out to all people who were involved in the event publishers, retailers, distributors all had a chance to say like what did you like about Tabletop Day 2017 and what would you like to change and we went over there soaked it all up and said okay well how can we do what we did well last year uh, on a logistics side and how can we improve this year on a business side yeah I mean I know that it's been very different um, you invited a lot of podcasters and video casters out to LA and did a much grander scale show last year. Yeah, because for me it's super important. There's so many people who are doing great stuff in the hobby right now and are amazing personalities that are pumping out awesome content and they need to be celebrated. Like those are people who are putting great stuff together and they're part of this industry. So we had like Rodney come out. We had uh, we we tried to get shut up and sit down to come out, but it just schedules didn't work out. Um, and we had like uh, all the guys from Roll Dice Take Names, uh, just a bunch of good individuals to come out and actually play games on tabletop day. Surprise, surprise. No, that's <laughs> the way it should be. I know in the past it was, you know, it was kind of the same people who were on the show tabletop would go out. There are also people who are available in L.A. Like that's one of the big things about the logistics of it is that when you have a studio, um, you have there's a lot of moving pieces when it comes to coordinating flights, getting hotels, um, asking the people if they actually have availability to come out. And um, uh, so we managed to actually take enough time to be able to coordinate everyone's individual schedules so that they can come out and enjoy the 18-hour marathon stream. Tom, I'm sure you'll watch this, and I'll probably see you in five minutes anyway, but you're always welcome to come out to the stream next year. So... I think you'll have presents from the Dice Tower next year. Yes! Um, but no, it's good. We have some great publishers who are already talking with us about some exclusive products that will go through the distribution cycle that retailers are used to again next year. We're also doing some new stuff. Um, we're dabbling with a community box, which we're calling the Event Marketing Kits. Uh, that is essentially going to be free product that will be available for anyone to order, like community members and retailers, and they only have to pay shipping on it. So uh, that will be fulfilled directly through um, uh, our logistic solutions and um, we're still working on details on that. So essentially distributors and retailers will have MSRP products that will be exclusive to Tabletop Day. There will be an event marketing kit that everyone can buy and get involved with to run their own Tabletop Day event. And then of course we're going to be um, doing some great solutions with our stream this year as well too. No, I mean, make sense? It, it totally makes sense because one of the big things that I heard in previous years was, hey, the very first year we ran Jason Levine Day at my house Jason and Levine and I was able to order order a box and for the last few years at Jason Levine Day at my house, actually no, we, we actually go to cool stuff for Tabletop Day, but, but assuming there was a Jason Levine Day, I couldn't actually order anything and now I'll be able to order again, which is great. Yeah, there'll be some and mostly it will be stuff that will have uh, like flags and um, stickers and things that you can use to promote your event. So to be totally clear, it won't be, it won't be like... Um, it won't be like the games that you can pick up at stores. There may be some, some smaller items, but it's that same kind of promo cards that in previous years people have gone to in order to get like an exclusive deck or exclusive cards. But now at Jason Levine Day, you're going to have maybe a little micro deck of cards that you can give out for your event because as long as you're registered on the site, tabletopday.com, then we're able to like authorize you to purchase the, the event marketing kits. You need to actually register an event and we went on to make sure we don't want you just holding on to the entire <laughs> kit on your own. And they will be limited. 
Like we can't we can't make hundreds of thousands of these things. Um, that's that's too much on the publishers. So we want to make sure that publisher has an opportunity that they can invest a certain amount of product into making these kits possible. And uh, it is 100% going to be a. Um, if you're on the website and you're a registered vendor at a registered event and you're making an effort to market and promote International Tabletop Day in your community, then we want to take care of you. But it's good because like people who run events at churches or people who run events at libraries or other places that weren't getting a kit, now they'll be able to get something. Yeah, I mean, they can still go to their retailer and they can still get exclusive product for the day. That is the games, that is the micro games. But if they want to get some cool stuff that has the Tabletop Day brand on it and be able to promote and hype their event and, you know, showcase some of the great ability, they just got to pay shipping. That's it. Which, which is fairly cheap, and the fact that it's just being given away is a great idea. Well, we want to support the community. Like, we, we did our best to put out these uh, unique promotional items through distributors last year, and some people had a great chance with it, and they were able to get it early, but then not everyone had access to it either. Like, not everyone had a local store that they were able to go in and grab these exclusive items to go bring out to their event. And uh, But the ones that did had a great time with it. So we just want to make sure that the retailers still get the products that they can have on the day of, and they can sell it, and it will be super great. For our International Tabletop Day, we get about 150 people in the store to 200. Yeah. It's it's a it's immense. I mean, this has been a big thing. Yeah, and one of the things we're we're still having strong discussions about is still being because we had the opportunity to we tried to do some Skype ins in the past on previous Tabletop Days, and the technology just wasn't quite there yet. It just wasn't reliable enough. And we tried, and there was some successes, there was some some, some failures. Um, but now the technology is so much better, and we had a really great Skype box that we integrated in last year's stream and. And even then, there were still some, some technological issues, which is making sure we had a strong connection. So we're exploring some ways to highlight great community members in the space uh, to be able to do stuff for the live stream as well, too, on top of what everyone else is doing out in the middle of the great, wonderful world of board games. No, that's cool. So, you, so you're going to go back to what happened in Season 1, where, you actually, where they live streamed from different stores in different places throughout the day or something to that effect? Well, nothing solidified. Um, it, I'm just saying that we are definitely exploring options to be able to still do great community highlights in events for the year. But all of this stuff is, it has a lot of moving parts. Oh, I can imagine. You know, and I don't want to make any promises and then have to go back on my word. That is the one thing I'm doing my absolute best not to do uh, this year and all the years going forward. Yeah, so... Be prepared that something may happen if they get the technology set up that you can Skype in from your stores and do something cool. Be prepared for something like that. May or may not happen. We we might have a semi-exclusive here, but we're not sure yet. But but be prepared for that. So all of you guys who are actually running events at stores, etc., and you want your stuff shown off, you might have a chance to do that. I mean, we're talking about the promos, what we do at our, our stores, we... when. If there comes 20 promos or something or 10 promos or something, yeah. the first thing we ask is, who owns the game? And if there's less people that own the game than the amount of promos we have, we give one promo to every single person who has the game because we want, we want to get the people who have the games, the promos. Yeah. So because, I mean, they're the ones that made the time to go buy the game. They're the ones who are hopefully enjoying the game. And, they, and, and that's one of the things. There's so many creative ways that stores are getting involved with Tabletop Day. We want to do our best. And we love to hear what's working for you. Because uh, one of the things that we got some great feedback on last year, too, is just being able to support stores that may have never done an International Tabletop Day before or are still getting their marketing and their promotion elements down to. And I want to support that. That's one of my personal things I'm championing this year is being able to make some content that helps people who want to run a great event at their store or at their community and how they can get make make the most out of tabletop day and one of the things that uh we also have this last year which um is helping us out a lot this year is that we have some great data of just how the sales metrics went out so we'll be able to predict print runs to a little bit of a better accuracy so there may not be that little that um uh, what's the term I'm looking for? The um, uh, rate of fulfillment at this point will be a lot higher. Uh, uh, again, projecting. No plan survives enemy contact, everybody, but we're doing everything we can to be able to make uh, sure that publishers know about what the sweet spot is uh, in order to make sure that there's enough for everybody. How much work has it been? Obviously, this has been kind of crazy for you to put this all together. 
Yeah, no, it's, I mean, and it's a small team. Uh, it always is. And one of the challenges that we've had putting together the event in the past is that uh, there still needs to be a company that's being run. And last year, one of the successes we had is, is that I essentially was designated as, uh, my job was just to do tabletop day for about, you know, six months. And that was uh, even just leading up in the ramp up into it. And then I slowly got people who are helping me over the course of the event. And um, it's going to be a, a kind of a similar deal this year. We we're, we're, we're have a lot. Everyone's really excited about uh, 2018. And so everyone's really uh, ready to get involved to make this, you know, again, and I'll say it every year, make this year the best year possible uh, with all of our resources that we have available to us. But, yeah, dude, it's a lot of work. Like it's there's a lot of distributors, there's a lot of publishers, there's logistics up the wazoo because we're essentially a, 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 acting as a publisher or like as a um, as a solicitation publisher for however many publishers that we're getting involved with, and then liaisoning with all of those distributors in order to make sure that everyone's getting their stuff by April. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Trust me, we have enough logistics for what we do with Kickstarter promos and other things that I could just imagine what you're going through. And you're doing it full time. Absolutely. So, you know, it's, uh, but it's fun. I love it. And I, when I, when I, two years ago when um, Tabletop Day was coming around, I, I volunteered for this. Like, no one asked me, hey, Ivan, would you do Tabletop Day? Would you, you know, help make this year something that's going to happen that'd be great. I volunteered. I said, I really have a lot invested in making this an amazing event. And I really love that it's an opportunity to be able to have a day of celebration. And I want to support the community. Um, and I, I, I appreciate everyone who's been able to get involved. And I really, really hope that you have an awesome tabletop day next year. No, I think everyone will. I mean, it really does celebrate community. And some of our biggest meetups are on Tabletop Day because everyone wants to be there because it's Tabletop Day. And Tabletop in general has, and Geek and Sundry has done a lot for the industry. So it's good that kind of to get a kind of a more of a mainstream appeal because this market is still a niche market. So you guys are able to tap into the more mainstream, which is really good. Right. And I mean, and honestly, Dice Tower is just as much of an inspiration as what we're putting together because you guys are so great at covering an extreme amount of content. And the, the amount of volume that you guys deal with is staggering. Like we, we really, uh, like I said, it's a pretty small company all in all. And um, the amount of studio time that we have access to usually makes it really hard. We have to be really really particular about how we can put stuff together and what we can green light every single year um, but you know board games are awesome and I'm happy that we're that, that we can still keep doing that because it's fun <laughs> board games are awesome wow I, I, yes I always say awesome and yes board games are awesome and just to quote you guys play more games We'll see you next year. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you so much, Ivan. Ivan Van Norman from Geek and Sundry, and congratulations on that, all the work that you're doing there as well on the side. And if you don't mind me saying, um, if, uh, uh, if you don't mind me doing an RPG plug a little bit. Of course. Yeah. Um, if you're out there and you're interested in seeing kind of a new format for some how the role-playing game digital media stuff's working out, I highly recommend that you check out Sagas of Sundry. It's a very unique show that's doing something very different from the standard RPG show kind of metrics. We're taking stuff off the table. We're getting some really dedicated actors that are making some hard choices using uh, the Dread system, um, where you know basically you're using a Jenga tower in order to make choices and perpetuate the story. And if it falls, something tragic and terrible happens. It's a rate, and if you're into horror, it's a pretty uh, it's a pretty fun genre piece as well too. No, that's cool. I mean, I, I, I'm not a role player anymore, but I role played. I mean, growing up, I was playing D and D and all of that stuff. Shadowrun, Cyberpunk, all of that stuff. Growing up, so I know all about the role playing end of it too. It's a beautiful set, and it has some deep immersion elements. Like there's some escape room qualities to it. So imagine running a off the table role playing game with actors, costumes, live props, and some really dedicated individuals to their characters, and being able to televise that. It's it's. A, uh, the, the, someone came up with an amazing acronym, and I've, it's been stuck in my head, but it's Theatrical Drama Reality Role-Playing Games is basically how it is. And I, I just I recommend you check it out if you have time. <laughs> I want to check it out. Now, you, you just sold me. That sounds really cool. I mean, to see 
it's like a LARP, but even cooler than a LARP. It's pretty cool, dude. And it's it's intense. Like it's um it's definitely one of those shows that gives you some major feels because the characters are going through some tough stuff. He's over there nodding his head. He knows what's up. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so uh, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me about all the things. There's um, there's a lot of great stuff that's going to be happening in 2018, and uh, uh, I would love that you're taking the time to be able to let us talk about it with you a little bit. We're really excited. I'm really excited. I'm ready to do this. Yeah, well, thank you, Ivan, for coming on, and it's been a pleasure. Yeah, thank you for your time, and go out, play games, have fun, and uh, we'll see you on the internet. Yep. We'll see you on the internet. That's our new phrase. And uh, once again, this is Jason Levine with another Dice Tower interview here from PAX Unplugged.